everyone welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be doing i would call it a fall tbr but if you've been around for a couple months you know how my summer tbr went so we are just going to call it a fall hopefuls list these are just books that i would like to read in the fall just because fall is like my favorite reading season and it's the only time of year i think that i read like specific books that i save for fall and so these are sort of a list of books that I would just like to get to, but I'm not going to pressure myself to like read them all or anything. I think my summer TBR was more just like haphazard, but this had a little bit more intention to it. So hopefully I'll stick to this one at least somewhat because the first one is one that's sort of like a tradition for me, I guess. I don't know. I've only been doing it for two years, but for the past two years, I've been reading a Stephen King every October. And so I read Misery and then last October I read It. And this October, I would really, really like to read The Shining. I feel like this should have been my first one. I don't know. I just, I feel like it's the most famous, but Misery also is pretty famous. So I guess it's hard to judge at that point. But I do really, really want to read The Shining. I also haven't seen the movie. And so I want to read the book and then see the movie. Because I've heard great things about both the book and the movie. I'm very excited for this. I also wanted to just put it out there that if anyone is interested in like doing a read along of The Shining, I would love to post that for October, but I just don't know like what the interest of that would be. So if you are interested, if you would like to participate in the read along of The Shining, and read it with me in the month of October, please let me know and I will plan something. But I just didn't know what the interest would be, so I don't have any set plans for that, but I would love to do it because reading Stephen King in October is just really fun, I think. The next one that I would like to read is one that I've had on my list for quite some time, but I've been seeing it like pop up on booktube a bit more, and that is Pedro Paramo by Juan Rulfo. And this one, I don't even really know what it's about, but I want to read it. I have no idea what it's about, but I have been trying to read more Mexican classics and this came up on the list. I believe this inspired Gabriel Garcia Marquez in his writings and so it's come up on the list. I really want to read it and it's also been coming up on booktube a bit. I haven't really seen much of the content related to it just because I'm trying to go in as blind as possible but I am excited to hopefully get to this one. It is sort of one of the priorities of this list. I really want to read it because again, I have been looking for more Mexican classics. I'm reading Aura currently, but I'm looking for more just to sort of continue this journey. And this one I know is like a core text. And so I'm very excited to read it. And by the way, there are also some academic books on here. It might seem strange, but I am reading a couple of different, or I'm not reading, but I'm hoping to read at least one academic book related to Chicano literature. Um, and so I have three options on here. I kind of want to read chapters and bits and pieces from each of these three, but I'm not too sure like where we'll get with this or whatnot, but I do want to read some of these. This is like an academic interest that I've had that I didn't really get to pursue in undergrad, and so I want to read a bit from at least one of these books. The first one is Post-Nationalism in Chicana slash Chicano Literature and Culture by Ellie Hernandez. I feel like when it comes to these academic sort of books, instead of me like trying to say what it's about, it's easier to just read the given description that you can find on the internet. So this particular one, the description is, in recent decades, Chicana literary and cultural productions have dramatically shifted from a nationalist movement that emphasized unity to one that openly celebrates diverse experiences. If that was just a bunch of, I don't know, it's hard like as a listener sometimes when people read like academic summaries like that. And so if that just completely went over your head. I'm sorry, but th I feel like it is the easiest just to sort of give the little blurb that's given than for me to try to give a description of an academic book that I haven't even read yet. But I think that's all I'm going to say about this one. I want to get to this one. It seems really interesting. And so I at least want to read like selections. We'll see. The next one is a new release that I have been so, so excited for. When the first images of this cover popped up on Instagram, I feel like I've never been more excited for a new release in my life. And that is The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. And she is the author that wrote Mexican Gothic. And so her books, well, all of her books are very different, but she has written books that are historical fictions set in Mexico. And this is one of those books. I believe it might be set in the 50s or the 70s. 
I forgot, but it's basically just like a reimagining of H.G. Wells's The Island of Dr. Moreau, which I really love. I love H.G. Wells. I love sci-fi. I love classic sci-fi. I love sci-fi with social commentary. It checks all the boxes. And when I heard that this was going to be a reimagining of that set in Mexico by Silvia Moreno Garcia, I was so, so excited. I have ordered this book. I don't have it yet, but it's on the way. So excited for this. This needs to happen because it's perfect for fall, I think, or at least for me, it just feels like a very fall vibe book. We'll see, but I'm very excited. I've been waiting for this. It's on its way. And next we have another one of my academic book options. If this is like incredibly dry for any of you, I am so sorry, but if this is just like what's actually on my TBR, I debated like cutting these out, but then I just wanted to share like what my actual reading plans are. And so I'm sorry, but this is another one of the ones that I would like to hopefully at least read some of this fall, and that is Bloodlines, Myth, Indigenism, and Chicano slash Chicana Literature by Sheila Marie Contreras. And this one, I'm just going to read the two sentence blurb again because I feel like, again, it's easier. So this examines a broad array of texts that have contributed to the formation of an indigenous strand of Chicano cultural politics. In particular, this book exposes the ethnographic and poetic discourses that shape the aesthetics and stylistics of Chicano nationalism and Chicano feminism. And then it offers perspectives on multiple different sort of core authors within Chicano, Chicana literature and studies. And so this seemed like, again, just like a core book. I do want to explore Chicano literature studies a lot more. And so this seemed like one that would be relevant. Again, I at least want to maybe read some chapters. I don't know if I'm going to read these academic books cover to cover because I feel like I've almost never done that even for class. It's usually just chapters. So I at least want to just dabble in these. The next one is one that I am so excited for. You all are probably going to be sick of me when I start reading this, but that is Red Harvest by Dashiell Hammett and yes we're doing another one Maltese Falcon was not enough I've been wanting to read this since I finished the Maltese Falcon but I waited I waited long enough I need to read it I've heard so many good things about the Red Harvest amongst like academics I think just because I wrote like a pretty long paper on the Maltese Falcon and the Red Harvest came up quite quite often as just one of his books that has social commentary on it. Particularly, I think it has, because Dashiell Hammett, in case you didn't know, which I feel like this is a very niche fact, so I don't know how many people know this, but Dashiell Hammett was a member of the Communist Party at one point. And in all of like the academic articles that I was reading, apparently Red Harvest is where that's most prevalent. And so I'm very interested because that was something that I was exploring within the Maltese Falcon. And I just love Dashiell Hammett so, so much. And so, I'm excited. This checks all my boxes. Very, very excited. One more academic book, just one more, I promise, and that is Chicano Narrative Dialects of Difference, and it's by Ramon Saldivar. And this one is just another one, again, that I was sort of like searching for what core text should I read to introduce myself to this study a bit more, or not to introduce myself, but just to get more familiar with it and just to get more well read on it. Um, so this is another one. Again, I'm just going to read the little blurb that I have because I think, again, that's the easiest. I'm going to keep repeating myself. In struggling to retain their cultural unity, the Mexican-American communities of the American Southwest in the 19th and 20th centuries have produced a significant body of literature. And so this book examines representative narratives, including the novel, short story, narrative verse, and autobiography that have been excluded from the American canon. And again, just another one that I'm excited to at least read selections from. I think there's all that there is to say about the academic books pretty much, but I am just excited to dabble in this because I am a literature nerd and this excites me. And the last one is The Underdogs by Mariano Azuela, which is a novel of the Mexican Revolution, which is pretty much just like what the title is. If you look at like the Penguin Classics, it's The Underdogs, a novel of the Mexican Revolution. But I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's like another classic work, I think. It's pretty well known. I don't know, but this is just, again, I guess a novel of the Mexican Revolution. I am such a great descriptor today, but I don't know much about this other than that. I know it's sort of like a classic text, but I'm very excited for this because I bought this years ago and then I didn't read it even though I wanted to and I kept putting it off and then it's come up in a lot of it's just come up more than I would like expect it to come up, I think. And so I'm excited to finally, hopefully read it. 
I do think that this is going to be a good companion novel to all the other like reading that I have lined up for fall. So this is my last fall hopeful. We will see how this goes. I, I don't know, I would say I'm not the most helpful, but we don't want to have low confidence at the start of this. So I'm gonna say I'm very hopeful. I think this list has more promise than the summer TBR, just because I think I learned from the summer TBR. I made it very, very ambitious and was just like throwing things that I wanted to read on it. But this is a little more intentional, I think. And so hopefully this like goes a little bit better, but if it doesn't, that's completely fine too, because reading is my hobby so it's fine but i would love to know what you are planning on reading this fall let me know about the shining read-along if any of you are interested in that and thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video